Hello and welcome back to a new tutorial. This week we're going to create this cloth simulation with cloned spheres on its vertices. It's super easy to set up but can make your project look more complex and interesting. Let's jump in and get started. So to begin with we're going to want to bring in a plane and change its width segments to 60 and its height segments to 60. That's going to give us some more geometry to simulate. So we can go up to our plane and we can right click and add a cloth tag in the simulation tags. We're going to go up to simulate and add a turbulence force. And with control D we can go into our simulation settings and turn off the gravity. Now we can start tweaking our turbulence to try to find a subtle look like this. We don't want it to be too crazy or intense just something that's moving um, and not sitting so still. So now we can clone our plane. We need to make sure we move that cloth tag to the cloner so that all our cloned planes are simulating. We can add a few more with the count in the cloner and now we've got five planes simulating with the cloth tag. But now we want to turn off our cloner and actually bring in a sphere. We can change its type to hexahedron and turn down its radius. We want to make it quite small because this is going to be instanced over each vertice. Uh, we can turn down the segments too because they're going to be so small that we're not actually going to see the edges too much. Now with our sphere selected we want to make another cloner and we want to change its mode to object. And with the eyedropper tool we can select our original cloner and we can see it's now instancing some spheres on that original cloner but we need to change the distribution to vertex. So now we've got a sphere on each vertice in our cloner of planes. So as simple as that we already have the look we were trying to achieve. So I'm going to go into my sphere and drop the radius down to maybe 2.5 or 3. I think something like this would look okay. Just so that the spheres aren't touching each other but they're fairly close to each other and I might need to make some adjustments to the thickness of the cloth so that the spheres don't uh, intersect too much. So playing through to test it here, I reckon I could probably up it a little bit more, but it is looking okay. I might even create a little bit more separation in the initial state and this is looking quite nice. I'm going to change the instance mode to multi-instance so we get faster playback. It's way smoother now. And with the camera selected I'm just going to add a protection tag so that it doesn't move. I just want to get a idea for how a material might look on it. And I also need to add a little bit more lighting to the scene. I've already got a dome light so I'm going to add an area light and just kind of have it pointing down from over the top. So I'm going to bring it up here and just point it down. I think just about here should do. So yeah, I think the lighting here is, is pretty nice for a, for a start. I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to add a Fresnel, I believe it's pronounced, and make some adjustments. I want to have a blue color. I'm going to turn off this and yeah, change the color to blue and yeah I'll keep that as white and then just adjust this curve fall off so we can just I just want a little bit of I don't want too much but I do want an outline of white uh, on the spheres okay so back to the setup I'm going to add a rotation force because I want to create kind of like a fold in the cloth so at the moment everything is going to rotate so I'm going to add a linear field so that we're only affecting roughly half of the uh, of the planes. So you can see now this right side is starting to fold over a little. So this is looking better, but I'm gonna need to change the initial state. So with the cloth tag selected, go into the dresser and select this initial state and click set. And now when you restart the simulation, it's gonna stay in that place you've got to, and then you can make some adjustments with the linear field, get it to a new place and then simulate again. And you can continue to do this until you've got a rough look that you like because then you don't need to restart again and try find an achievable look. So I'm making more adjustments, just moving the linear field around until I get a nice fold that I like. So 
something like this is looking pretty nice. I'm going to turn off the, I think it's the work plane. Yep, I'm going to turn that off so that I can see a little better. And I'm going to move my area lights because now we've got a new kind of shot. I'm going to have to move it around. And yeah, I think this is, this is, should be nice. I'm going to move the camera too. So I'm going to need to deactivate the protection tag and just move it around. And I might turn up the focal length. Um, but let's just quickly see how this looks. Let's get it into frame. I'm going to move it over to the right a little. I'm going to up the focal length to 70 and then move back out. Yeah, I'm quite liking this look. I might need to make some adjustments to the material though. I'm going to make another light, duplicate this one with control and drag it and then just flip it around so that it's facing the other way. Just to add a little bit of light from beneath, which I think looks quite nice. Maybe turn down the exposure a little. Now back in the material, I'm going to go to transmission and I'm going to turn the weight up. So it's kind of making it a little bit more glassy. So the light going through it is going to create sh different shades of blue. Maybe I'll make the Fresnel a little darker, make that blue a little stronger. And then maybe, maybe this scatter color, maybe I'll make that blue as well, but a different shade. Only make some really subtle adjustments with this one. And then I reckon maybe I'll turn down the weight of the transmission a little bit. I'll see what it looks like when it's all the way up. Yeah, so you, you completely kind of lose that blue color. I want it a little bit more saturated. So yeah, now we're getting some nice different gradients of blue because of that transmission. The light passing through the different spheres is creating some nice shading differences. Yeah, I really like this look. So this could have been achieved in different ways. You could have used an object to collide into these spheres, but I quite liked the use of the rotation force uh, mixed with the linear field and then just kind of adjusting it. I feel like using that initial state button really helps when you simulate something and you like it, you can just save it and then keep making adjustments to it over the top. Although this was a simple and easy setup, it does give off a complex and interesting look, so be sure to try it out. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.